getting ready for Steam Carnival by 2-Bit Circus right here on ION. I gotta tell you, it's an incredible place of innovation, invention, and at the end of the day, collaboration for young and old. Let's go have a look. So this is one of the oldest buildings in downtown. It's one of the old Edison power plants. And uh, I don't know if you can see up there, it's an Edison Electric Company. But, yeah. you know, there are pictures when this was literally the only thing for miles, you know, in, in every direction. So really a fun old building. Uh, one of the things we love is... The brewery, too. It used to be, yeah, the other, a couple of the other buildings used to be yeah. an, old, uh, an old Caps yeah. brewery. Right. Uh, but uh, one of the things we love about this is, you know, power plants are steam powered and so are we. So, awesome. uh, you awesome. know, it's just a different kind of steam. Nice. So, okay. You can see the electric car that our lead engineer, Dan Busby, converted. Uh, Beautiful. Beautiful. Triumph. Uh, this is our garden gnome, Mr. T. <laughs> so uh, now we're inside. You can see we've got, you know, 50, 50 foot ceilings. So we call this place the Big Top. Uh, but you know, never met a double entendre we didn't like. <laughs> uh, so today I'm going to show you a bunch of broken stuff. Okay. Uh, basically, we're in uh, you know we're, we're in our crazy carnival production mode. The carnival's next week. So if all the stuff that's working is installed at the at the venue. Uh, we're so all the stuff that's here is stuff we're actively building and still getting 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 running. Uh, this right here, uh, if you remember the game of foosball, uh, this is foosball with laser beams. So uh, these are all little uh, uh, mirrors that I can position your, your your opponents on the other side, and then a, literally a green laser out of there, a red laser out of there. You're trying to bounce them around and, and uh, into a goal. Uh, so pretty fun uh, thing. You're all here having to sort of position. Any of these games, uh, or do most of them have what is signage and say this is yeah, really what it is? Yeah, exactly. There's going to be posters next to each one that shares a little bit of the inspiration, the kinds of steam, uh, uh, you know, disciplines that we use to make them, a uh, little quote from the creator, all that kind of stuff. So we try to peel back the curtain and show, you know, sort of what was involved in making. Them. So what do we got here? So this is one of our musical chairs. Okay. Um, the real game will have 12 of these in a circle, and conventionally. When you play musical chairs, you physically take chairs away and people walk in a circle around them. But in this version, there's LEDs inside that can be any color. So instead of sorting, instead of the people walking around and physically removing chairs, the chairs can deactivate themselves by turning off and the colors can change. So the chairs themselves are shuffling and when, when they stop, you can sit on them and there's a four sense of resistor on top that detects if you're there or not. So is this what we're sitting on, or is there? There'll be other? a cushion. There'll be a cushion. Yeah. Okay, but that sensor's gonna sense the cushion being there, and the impact. Yeah, it's the sensor's really sensitive. Yeah. And I can adjust the threshold. That sensor's ours. Right. <laughs> <laughs> but you can saturate this pretty easily. Like, if I put my finger on like this, then like it's fully saturated. So even if you don't sit directly on the center, because so the cushion's there. Why this shape for a musical chair? Of course, from you know, two-bit circus stuff, from steam carnival stuff. Uh, like why the, the square? Well, in other words, you know, when we play musical chairs, uh, you know, it's a chair, right? Right. And so this doesn't have a back. It's it's a little shorter. That's true. Or smaller, if you will. So what's behind that? So it's nice that it doesn't have a back because there's no real direction. Okay. And we picked this like enclosed shape because light diffuses nicely through the sides. So what's the easiest way to like tell people what the state of the chair is? Fill the whole thing with light. Got it. And it's short. Like it's good for kids to sit on or adults. Um, Very cool. Yeah. So our nonprofit is going to be launching. Uh, we're having we're announcing it at our gala on the 22nd, and it's entitled Steam Powered, and it is really trying to um, as much as Two Bit Circus upends the, the game industry and entertainment industry. We're hoping that Steam Powered will do the same with education, looking at how we can bring together a really diverse group of individuals, from after school educators to instructional day educators to STEM professionals, to other types of mentors, to community leaders, and how they can create a ecosystem of learning and really deconstruct the type of um, this perceived mystery behind innovation and invention um, and help bring our students to become the next generation of, of creators and inventors. Very nice. Really. So where do you draw your inspiration from? Oh boy, I'd say many places, but I'd say I'm really inspired by the people around me. Uh, this is such an amazing 
diverse group of people. I mean, it, everyone comes from all walks of life. <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's a pretty great place to come to work every day, and there's a culture of learning here that if you don't know how to do something, there's always someone who's gonna talk to you about how you could do it, um, and maybe have an idea of how you could improve upon your idea, and that it's that synthesis that makes it really, really cool place to work. So you're here in our annex, uh, surrounded by technology that is almost there. This is the stuff that we're just about to put on the truck and bring down to craft for the steam carnival. Uh, the thing that scares me about this stuff is that <laughs> we're so close on this stuff, right? But from a prototype to well, I mean, it's gone. It's gone through prototyping phase at our shop. It's come over here. It's in game form now, and we're testing it. We're bringing you know groups of people over here, sitting them on the musical chairs, putting them in front of the button wall, letting them play the pinball, and oh, so, something breaks now. We gotta bring it back to the shop, we gotta fix it. Inside of every one of these games is just a hodgepodge of technology. You know, there's no best practices guide yet for how to make crazy carnival games. That's coming. That's coming. That's coming. Yeah. I mean, we're getting better at this. Yeah. But, but still, I mean, the tools we're using to make these games are evolving day by day. You know, we're contributing to the state of the art, other people are contributing to the state of the art. I mean, once upon a time, you get an Atmel microcontroller and you're off to the races. Nowadays, there's 17 different Arduino clones. There's Raspberry Pis. Intel's got their Edison. Right? We've, we've got all these available technologies with which to build our carnival games. And, you know, we're kind of like kids in the candy store sometimes. Like, hey, but we could use this to build something cool, right? Consequently, we have different games built on different technology stacks. You know, each of which can fail in a slightly different way. And we're learning about these technologies as we go. We got to stay up to date, right? You know, right. because or, or ahead. Because now we got to stay ahead. Yeah. I mean, but believe me, we're using these tools. We're ahead of pretty much everybody. No one's using this stuff the way we do. You've got to go to Steam Carnival at Crafted. It's going to be really just awesome. And you've got to get your tickets now for the weekend and show up. You're going to see some incredible games, incredible inventions, all interactive. And hey, I'm just excited to be here and to help present this. So we'll see you over there at Crafted this coming weekend.